Good evening and welcome to this week's Loose Links. Join us as we are a panel of three this week, but still got lots to talk about, all on this week's show. This week's Loose Links joining me on for your Tuesdays from Nicholas James is Claire Brownie May. Oh, Claire, you're a bit fast there, I'm fast Well, let's <laughs> talk about this evening. The weather has gone absolutely crazy and there has been in news this week. But it does make us think are we thinking about climate change? And do you think we are ever? with the weather or is there always something to complain about we also talk about the sad news of paul from s club seven as his death he's now not with us anymore but he did get us talking about death and do we talk about death enough as and is an inheritance important to you find out what the panel think and we finish this week, this is why the chosen goes in this panel, because this week we talk about alien invasion. And would you ever want to know if aliens were here? Would you like to know? And do you believe in ghoulies and ghosties? All that and a lot more on this week's Loose Links. Good evening, panel! Good evening. Good evening. How are we? It feels very weird, just the three of us, doesn't it? I know, I know. Very, very weird, just the three of us. But we're still going to do it because it's better than no show at all. So join us this Definitely. week. We've got lots to talk about. But there is some other big news this week that I need to share with you. And I'm going to share it by a song. Are you ready? Can you hear it? No. No. Uh, Come on, give us a sing song then, Nick. We can't hear it. You have to sing it. Blair Brownie made it's your birthday this week. Oh, I, gotta, birthday. I, I, can't, I can't hear it. Yeah, that's why I assume it's happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Do you, have you got anything planned? I'll, I'll tell you something, you look absolutely fantastic for 81. Well done, you look absolutely. <laughs> yeah, turn turn them around and eighteen. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Is there anything planned, Claire? Planned. Um, I'm taking my son to hospital. Um, then we'll go for a few drinks, and then um, we'll have a Chinese uh, in the evening. So. Just nice and chilled oh, when you get well, to my age. Happy birthday from Loose Links. A lot of love to you. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day. But let's start with topic one, as we always do. The first Met Office name, The Storm, this year has hit the UK. We forecast warning unseasonable strong winds could pose a danger to life. Um Storm is Anthony hits the late on Friday and expected to continue into Saturday with strong winds and heavy rain forecast. The Met Office has issued two amber weather warnings for wind in West Wales, so not us, West Wales mm. and parts of the southwest of England. But panel with weather like this do you think now is the time we should start thinking about climate change and making more laws for the future generation do you think that we need to be doing something now and not just think about us and our lives at the moment but also think about the future think about children's children do you think we need to be making a difference now i think we should have a long time ago yeah, we should have already done it, to be fair. This, you know, I think we're, it's going to be a case of too little, too late. By the time they do do something, it's going to be too little, too late. You know, it's been there. Science, scientists have been there saying, you know, this is it. This is what. And then there's been the naysayers saying, oh, scientists are full of you know what. And, you know, I it, it's going to be too little, too late because nobody 
nobody can be bothered to do anything about it because they've got other more important things to worry about. Yeah, I just think it's like, you know, icebergs, they've been, I mean, I, I don't know a lot of, a, a, about it, but like icebergs have been melting, you know, quite tremendously for quite a long time. Now, that's got to tell us something. And then, of course, the change in the weather, um, that's got to tell us something. But I don't know. It, and the it's natural like, disasters as well, all these natural disasters we're having all over the world. Totally. But, but again, it's like recycling, you know. Try and do it for for the planet, but nobody seems seems to to bother, you know. So it, I think it is a little too late because who knows what's round the corner? Like you say, with the weather changing, they've had all these storms, the flooding, um, and you know that's in this country. Of course, we 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 don't get the sunshine, but then in 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 other countries, you get like the fires, uh, and the droughts and all things like that, which they are probably warm countries. But it, it's just getting ridiculous, you know. So whereas on one hand we're all sort of got drown, drowning, and the others have got droughts, you know. When when is it going to change? Who's going to change it? Do you think though? Do you think <laughs> I'm always moaning about the older generation, and I need to be more aware of what I'm actually saying, actually, because I'm always yes. moaning about it. But do you think a lot of people say, so when we talk about climate change nowadays and we talk about when they say, like, we get we get stats now, don't we, in, right, 2050 this is going to happen and in 2061 we're going to, we're going to try and aim for this. And when I, when I have discussions beyond loose, outside with friends and stuff like that, a lot of people have said to me in the past, well, I'm going to be dead by then. I'm going to be dead and buried by then. So, and do you think, do you think, so on both sides of the fence, do you think our younger people are not taking it into consideration enough? And do you think our older generation are almost like, well, I'm not going to be here, so why do I need to think about it? Yeah, I agree with, you, with both of it. Like mm -hmm. some of us do, do care, as in younger and older. Um, but I think a lot of people do say say that, oh, well, I'm not going to be here. But a lot of people will say, yeah, I'm not going to be here. But my kids are and my grandkids, you know, and my gener you know, their their uh, families are going to still be here. Um, and it's and it's not just about I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm not all creatures, great and small. But what about the animals? You know, Stop laughing. What about you know? What well, about these? That, Claire, I love that. But the animals who can't yeah. help what happens. But the thing know? is, the animals, animals don't understand what's going on either. They don't understand what's going on like we do. So, like I say, it's it's as humans that not the aliens, the humans <laughs> that have to um <laughs> to try and do something to help the future. Maybe you know, the aliens can help us. And the aliens <laughs> may be able to help us, yeah. But can we it, stay on just... topic, ladies? Can we stay yeah, on yeah. topic? <laughs> but, but what annoys me is, it's like when they say, by so-and-so, so-and-so. Why is, why is it going to take that long? You know, and they should be all the time thinking of different things, different ways that we can help our planet. But are because we good at doing it, Claire? Are we, Are we good, good at doing it? it? Because no. the thing is, no, no. we're not. See, I, I, I totally agree with that because I I will listen to anybody on the TV. I think, oh, my goodness, when you hear, like, Mount Everest is melting and, and our world is just changing and this, that and the other. But the small things that we can do at home, and I'm sure I've mentioned this on the show with Rachel Penny. Hi, Rachel, if you're watching. And she told me off and quite quite right, rightly so, she told me off, is that I, I don't even properly recycle. I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered to sift through. I don't have a bin, so that's that's my excuse. I need to get a bin for the kitchen. I don't have a bin, so I just have a bag, and everything goes in this bag. I'm not I'm not thinking all oh, that can be recycled. That, but 
do you think we're all doing enough now as people? I, he, here's me admitted, I'm not. I'm not doing enough and I need to get better at it. And do you think it's because, Claire, I know you're getting ready. I'm, I'm ready for you. Um, I think it's because, again, and I've mentioned this before in shows, we are stuck in our own bubbles. Actually, it's not affecting our home terms at the moment. It's not affecting our, our our little world around us. Yes, it's affecting it's affecting miles away. Snow's melting. We're having storms in in and fires and stuff like that. But actually, does it hit us when it hit home? Is that the only time that we start to really think about it? But no, then, I by don't. that point, it's too late. By the time it's hit you personally, it's too late. You can't. Re you won't be able to reverse it. Because at that well, point, it's like, you know, then, then Clara, it's like you selling rose to your birthday is. <laughs> yeah, I have water. One has been at work, and one's one's a bit tired. One needs hydrating. <laughs> yeah. Do you agree with that, Claire? Do you think too little, too late, and we need to start thinking about it now? Well, I just think it's people like you that put us to shame yeah. in that in in that respect. I mean, I know it's different areas because you live in a different area to me. But in, in hindsight, I have got four bins. I don't use one because that is a garden waste bin. And um, I don't have any garden waste because I've got no grass, as you know. So it's a good storage bin for outside. But then I have my uh, paper and bottle recycling, as in plastics, I have my household one, and then I have my glass. Ooh, glass is quite new to us, but before glass, I even went round to friends and said, don't put glass in the bin because it'll go to landfill and it will not go away. So I used to go, and, and supermarkets have done recycling in different uh, yeah. varieties, but glass, I've even gone. I've always I mean, done it. Even at school, if we've had um, an empty jam jar or anything that's glass, I will bring it home and I will put it in my bin. As I say, now we've got a glass bin, I will do it. If I see a can on outside my house, I'm not saying I go litter picking regularly, but I will pick it up and put it in my bin. I, I hate litter. I, you know, if you go to the park and you see it and I just think, well, you've carried it there. Why can't you just carry it to the nearest bin? It, 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 yeah, you know, it, it, it gets me when people drop litter, right, when they're like two feet away from the bin. I see it, I'll go, but there's a bin there. Why Why have you dropped it there? There's, there's a bin just there. What, what's, what's the, you couldn't have made, you know, made two more steps to put it in the bin. Again, it's where people chuck fast food or something out the window or they sit in a car park and eat it. And like you say, there's a bin maybe there um, and they they just open the door and put it on the floor. It's like, mm. why? I feel like I've, I've just been told off. Thank you very much, Claire Brown. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. But when it, when it comes to weather, ladies, are you when the sun's out and it's boiling hot and, and it's beautiful, which doesn't often happen in the UK for us. It really doesn't. We have, we, we, I think we've celebrated now summer. I think we're hitting autumn. I think we've had um, it. <laughs> but are you, are you ladies that first out in the sunshine or do you actually hide away from it? Can't you stand the heat? So let's I don't have to be. Now. I have to be very careful with the heat anyway because it affects my heart. It makes me makes me ill. Yeah. Um. So you know, when it gets to a certain point, it's like, yeah, I'm in. But best part of time of the year for me is spring and autumn. I they're the they're the they're the best times for me. If people say, "Oh, what's the best time for you?" I'm like, "Well, spring and autumn. Those temperatures are just right for me. Not too cold. Not too hot." I don't mind the rain. I don't mind the wind or anything like that. It doesn't bother me. Um, it's just the S word in the winter that bothers me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about you, Clara? You want to first hit the sunshine and hit the garden with a beer? The, the trouble is, it, it, I, I work. Um, and so, like, you know, Monday to Friday, weekends are okay. Um, but then when it comes to the weekend, you have your housework and all that to catch up on. But there's nothing better than a lovely sunny day to get your washing out, yeah. put it on the line. Then I can sit 
with a beer and enjoy. Um, but like you say, that we've not really had a, a lot of time to, to do that. So it, it is quite frustrating. I, I do like it. I mean, as a, as younger um, and that before I had the children, going away, was, you know, was great. Uh, I find personally getting older um, with with children, it's a bit difficult because you can't do, you know, the lolling about and you've got to be careful how many beers you have. Um, but I like all, or like um, Sam said, I do like all, all weathers. Uh, you know, I don't like to be cold. Um, and I do like winter if I'm in. I love looking at the glistening <laughs> snow, but then it melts. And then it, it, you know, and it turns to ice, and you know, as a, as a and that's car not driver, so fun then, is it? It's not nice, and you know, then I think of the others, elderly, elderly, elderly people who can't get out. You know, well, um, the other thing is, even it's even changed dramatically. Climate change since I was a kid. So I remember being in school, and I remember what we're in now—the six weeks holiday—and I remember the six weeks holiday being scorching. It was, it was, it was red hot. It was, it was lovely. You were at the park. You were out for the day. You, you looked forward to July and August. You can't, you can't do that anymore, can you? You cannot rely on the weather that we have nowadays to plan anything, yeah. really. Yeah, Not it has all. changed on a lot. Yeah, it's like, like it's a... like don't... sorry, sorry. <laughs> like, go on, Claire, like... you first, and then Sam, go, go. Again, it, it, it's like, you know, um, a, a lot of us can't afford to go abroad to, to get the sun. So, you know, as in myself, I'm going away um, in this country in a couple of weeks. And it's like, well, what do you take? You, you know, it, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's really cold, but, you know, in the evening it can get a bit, a bit nippy. Um, it, it can be sunny one minute and then all of a sudden it's chucking it down with rain. So, you know, you need a bag like with a jacket in, then you need an umbrella um and then you need your flip-flops it's like you know it, it's really difficult because the weather is so um interchangeable uh you know you look on your web weather thing and it has been quite right today like I say I have been in holiday club and uh at, at one stage it started to rain you know and we were having a picnic and it wasn't due to rain it didn't last for long and then late on the sun came out and it was absolutely glorious and it's like really so, uh, yeah, it's really, it's just mad. It really is just mad. Do you agree, Sam? Yeah, it is. I mean, going, talking about summer, I'm going to talk about winter where, you know, when I was younger, when I used to enjoy being out in the snow, um, it used to be like a couple of feet of snow and every winter you get guaranteed there would be snow. Um, but now in the winter sometimes it just still feels like it's autumn I mean I don't mind that's much that's fine by me um but I know that you know my daughter she loves the snow she loves how you know she wants a white Christmas kind of thing you know she wants to have the snow so she can go and uh you know just go and walk in it on the fresh snow and things like that she loves to walk on the fresh snow and you know it but like I say you know when I was a kid back in the 80s I do remember that it used to be quite high with snow and we used to be making snowmen, chucking snowballs at each other and all of that. But we're not even but, prepared for that, are we, nowadays? When, yeah. it comes to, when it comes to snow in the UK, we have an inch of snow and every school closes, every business closed down, every every place. It's like we're, we're just not, not We're just not prepared for it anymore. We're just not prepared for it anymore. But again, me being David Attenborough, you know, going back to the animals, all oh, those animals that hibernate, they don't know when they're supposed mm. to hibernate. They don't know when they're supposed to wake up because, you know, the, the seasons... Or head south. Yeah, the seasons are that mixed up. They just don't know poor little things, so... But moving on, moving on, I'm sure I'm sure climate change will come up again. I'm sure that we'll always be having a conversation about it because it's not going to change any time soon, is it? But on a bit of a sadder note, uh, ladies, we're going to talk about Paul from S Club 7. So the singer was found dead on April the 6th, just two months after he and the band announced they were due back to go on a reunion tour this autumn. It's, it will still go ahead, but without him. After his death, 
they found out that he 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 was in a lot of debt of 15 grand left to his name so a lot of his money after he's died obviously has paid off those debts but it did get me thinking about um death itself so let's talk about death itself can i just ask you first panel does death scare you let's go to first you claire does just the thought when you think for two minutes on a Friday night with your bottle of wine, actually, what will it be like? Where will I go? What will happen? Does the word, does death scare you? Yes and no. It's like, what am I going to die of? Am I going to have a painful death? Am I going to be really poorly, you know? Um, or am I going to get knocked over by a bus and I'm, I'm out just like that? It's not a nice thing to think about, but it's something that you do think about. And yes, it does scare me because, um, you know, I have still got two children. I'll always have two children. But as in, you know, they're a bit older now. But for them to lose, a, a, you know, their mum at the age, you know, they're still like under 20. Um, I try not to think about it. I know it's going to happen. Um, I still don't know if I want to go in a cask or if I want to be burned. I don't know. But, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen as in, you know, will I reach a ripe old age? She won't say a word because I am in the, I am <laughs> quite young at the moment. Um, But, yeah, it, it's not nice. You know what I mean? You know, when you sit down... If I am sat down on a Friday, it's usually watching the soaps anyway, and there's someone always, um, you know, dying on them. Um, but no, it's not a nice thing, and um, I just hope I go quick, but not by a bus. <laughs> does it does it scare you, Sam? Not so much, really. Um, but because I do mediumship work and and I work with uh, spirit and things like that. Um, it doesn't scare me that much. I, I know. I think that's the reason. I mean, there's a a line from a Robbie Williams song, "I've Come Undone," and it goes, um, "I'm not scared of dying. I just don't want to." And that line, whenever somebody talks about death, that line always comes to my mind. You know, I'm not scared of dying. I just don't want to. Not yet, anyway. So, you know, it doesn't so much scare me. And I think because in the line of work that I do, I think, you know, that I think that helps with the fact that, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, like Claire, you know, I, I want to go out quick. I don't want to be, you know, suffering. I would like just to go out in my sleep just like that. You know, I don't want to, you know, just the thing that scares me is if I'm suffering. But, it is, um, it is, it is. Generally, it doesn't scare me. No, well, the thing is, it, it is, it's a weird one for me because mm. I, as you know, I have got a massive faith and there's been, there's been many of things that have happened in my life that makes me think there has to be a life after death. Like I've, I've sat in, I've sat in a, in the kitchen with a friend and I was talking about her partner that had just died and all of a sudden there was a strong smell of flowers like a really really strong we could both smell it and she went to medium like like yourself Sam went to medium and said it was it was her, I nearly said her partner's name then it was her partner coming back reliving giving her flowers and I could I could smell the flowers they say don't they that white feathers are a sign that is, there's, there's, a, there's all different kinds of signs um, yeah yeah and robins, the thing, butterflies and the thing um, is the, the thing that gets to me is I do believe in in God I've got a strong faith in God but there is a tiny part of me that often thinks and often is shook up by me thinking well what if that is it at the end what if we die and that's it because when when we're young and I'm not saying I'm I'm young young but when we're young we think we're invincible don't we we think it's never going to happen we think it's absolutely miles away yeah. to even think about death or dying or anything like that but actually and that's and I've spoken to my vicar about that and that's okay to have those shadowy moments as a Christian to have those moments to think well what if this is it what if at the end of it that's it 
you just die and and that's a scary thought when you really think about it isn't it well yeah I mean like nobody really knows you know if there's a god I mean, all over the world, there's all these wars, and, you know, all because of, um, of of different gods. But who really knows if there is one or not, um, which is the scary thing. You know, like I say, people are killing each other and they don't even know if the person's there. Um, but also, like you say, not knowing, like when you do, do eventually go, um, where do you go or like you say do you just close your eyes like you do when you go to sleep and that is it yeah, I, mean, I don't I don't know it is like they say life after death um is there you know I want to come back as they say oh I want to come back as a butterfly or it, it it's weird it really it really is weird and but uh, again a lot of the things I think that people think about is from TV as well. You know, how yeah. do they get all these films of, of different, of the devil and of, uh, you know, they have like the good and the bad. Um, yeah, it, it's like um, when I was um, I, can't, I was I was talking to someone in some comments of some video somewhere and uh, they were saying, oh, may God be with you and all that. I said, well, that's all well and good, but I don't, that's not my belief system. My belief system is North Pagan, so I have many gods. And then they started going on about the fact that I'm going to hell, uh, you are the devil. I'm like thinking, well, no, because the devil is a Christian concept, not a pagan concept. So, you know, that's not my belief system. That's your belief system. You can believe that I'm going to go there. That's fine, but I believe I'm not. So, you know, it's about respecting each other's belief exactly. and where I mean, you're going to go afterwards. Why should you go to hell? You know, that that mm. is just like, you know, it, it's like Hitler. Um, you know, you're not blonde. So, you know, you, you're 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 Jewish. So you, you're not one of us. It's like, yeah. ah, it, it's... God, yeah, I... even even gets you thinking about the stuff around you, doesn't it? So, like my house, my house is work in progress. As you can see, every series there's a new scenery behind me. I don't live in a mansion. <laughs> just to let you know, I just decide to swap places some weeks and go right. I'm going to do it from here from now on. But when I think about my house, I want a downstairs toilet installing. I want an extension on the back of my house to turn my front room into my... I want to do so much. But actually, I have... <clears throat> so when we build up in wealth, and that's when we start to think about stuff like that, about improving our homes and improving this and improving... But actually, when I really think about it, does it really matter... Does it, does it really matter if we have the state-of-the-art kitchen? Does it really well, matter? You're not going to take it with you. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I was just about to say. We don't. Yeah. A house, like to me, when somebody, a house is an, a house is a massive time century for me. So I know in 150 years, I won't be living in this house. There'll be somebody else with new ideas, mm. new plans to change the house, as there was before me. But do you think we think about too much about stuff that we really shouldn't waste our time on? Totally. And a lot of it is not even for you. It's for, for other people you want to impress and show. Um, like yourself, Nick, I, I, well, I've never really had a, a lot of money and uh, I, I've always saved um, for most things. But like the room that I'm sat in now, everything is second hand, everything. Mm. And, you know, I just literally... Have you got that right, Claire? Do you know what I mean? Have you got that right? When we really think about it, that, like it, it's, your home is a home. And for so long I've had in my brain... Oh, it's yeah. got to be this standard and it's got that. No. Why? And now I sit there and think, why have I wasted so much time? I know, that? and it and it is. And I just think whoever comes through that door, they're coming to see me or or my family. Um, this is this is mine. You know, my son loves his space. My daughter, she's had her room done, so she loves her space, which thank goodness, because it's a tip. Um, and I'm not happy with my space, but only because I have had it for so long and, you know, everything was gifted 
and but I can't afford to I, I want to get rid of the whole lot and ju just this room and have it for me because this is I say my room um but you know it's clean it, you know it's so it's tidy it needs a lick it of works. paint it's still well, that, leads, it. that, that leads me on to the final question because we seem to be talking quite a lot, ladies, to get through the time. Um, <laughs> there, what, what it leads me on to the final question when you think about your nearest and dearest, is it really important, especially after this, um, this man that's died, Paul, that's died from Escrow Clevin and left, left a lot of debt in his name, so a lot of money has gone back to the debt companies to pay? Is it really important to you an inheritance? No, no, I was going to say, me personally, no. Um, no. And uh... I'd much rather have that person be here than have them have the inheritance. I'd much rather have that person close to me than the yeah. inheritance. Yeah, I just think, and you know, unless you have got a, a lot of money, but you know, coming from a, like a working class family, if that's that's what it's titled. You know, it's just nice to, um, we you, you know, we just went on 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 basic holidays. We, I didn't go abroad. Um, growing up, uh, and yeah. like now, I'm not saying I'm struggling, um, but you know, to to have any money that I could leave behind would be great. But even you know, when my um parents pass, I don't want. Yeah. I don't. I want the memories. I want, you know, what I, I well, the memories and the money. I want my mum, especially, you know, if she's got money, I want her to use it now. She's coming up for, uh, well, this year she's 79, but like 80 years old. I want her. You're older than your mum, Claire. Up, Mr. <laughs> Nick. It's a good job we're not in the same room, isn't it? Exactly. And I've got <laughs> this water and I've squirt it all over him. Um yeah, yeah. I, person I mean, yes, of course, it would be lovely. It would be lovely if you know there was a, a lot a lost aunt and uh yeah. um, they, they, and a long just, lost cousin. A, a, you know, just a little bit of money, it would be like, wow, but again, I didn't know that person and I would mm -hmm. feel quite awful that I'm taking this money but if it all went through and everything I'd think that is just, just too know, ladies, we have done a poll on it quite interesting um is an inheritance really important to you when a family member or loved one dies 99% of you said no 1% of you oh. said yes that were you, weren't it? No, it was not me. You found that was you. One person, <laughs> so there is one person on our page, not going to identify them, but there is one person on our page that an inheritance is really important to them. So it depends on different moods, doesn't it? But let's move on to the land of love, everybody's favourite subject, as Love Island Friendship um, ends after a final feud erupts over Instagram. Love Island's Whitney and Mitch have clashed with Katie after she made a number of claims about her fellow co-star on various different podcasts. Two Love Island stars have come to blows with an ex-Love Islander just after the final. The latest series on ITV's Two's dating show ended on Monday the 1st of August. But just days after the Islanders have settled into normal life, after an eight-week stint in the villa, the apparent feud has emerged between three stars running up, Whitney, Mitch and Katie after making shocking revelations on a number of podcasts. So, do you think it's attention-seeking when people take arguments to social media? Of course it yeah. is. I mean, yeah. especially Love Island. I mean, what they're going on for. Oh, everything you see on ITV2 or X. From their five minutes of fame, that's all it is. You know, some people have made it, but... It's like oh, they just they just want the fame, don't they? So 
they're not but is it weird i get that claire but is it weird so when we look on i don't know if you guys look on tiktok or or or, or watch tiktok at all there are many other platforms out there uh but i'm going to tiktok at the moment because i'm sure lots of you out there have watched evil queen and cla and and alphabet and and the drama and when when I watch their drama fold out on TikTok, so their arguments, their battles, their this, their that, and the other, there's part of me that thinks, oh, I can't bother to watch this, and I scroll on. But there is part of me drawn into it, drawn into, oh, my goodness, what's happening now? What's going on now? Actually, and they make a lot of money from doing that, making a lot of money from being dramatic on social media. But then when you think about soaps and TV shows, when do we most watch them? When there's devastation happening in the air? When there's something going oh, well, when when soaps most watched? Christmas Day. Because we know there's going to be a dramatic thing on Christmas Day and we all do die for our tellies. So actually, have we got it wrong and they've got it right? Well, it's a money-making thing, isn't it? Um, personally, I, I, I don't um, go on to to, to that um, genre, but um, it is, like, like you say, anything. Um, and, and the Christmas episode, they try and make it juicy as ever because they know they're going to get the viewers. Uh, luckily, for a lot of us, we're not at work over Christmas, so, you know, the viewers And I don't are... watch TV either, so I don't... <laughs> no, well, you know, uh, I don't watch TV, so I didn't even realise Love Island was on because, you know, we we don't watch TV in our house. Yeah, well, I do because uh, kids don't talk to me, so I have to talk to someone. <laughs> so you should talk to the TV. <laughs> um, don't talk to me. Yeah. Um, and again, it's... It, 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 you know, we're, we're blaming our children for, or you know, using um, smartphones and things. And where do people make the money? Yeah. TikTok and streaming and everything that you need to be sat and glued to, to something. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying... But what, do we have happened? those friends on social media, Claire? Let's be honest. Let's not name them and shame them. But oh, do we have sorry. those friends? Do we have those friends on social media that will put? A sorry, hang on. Well, do we have? Do we have oh, those friends that we have that put a status of a sad face and say oh. nothing else but just put a sad face or feeling sad? How do you feel when you see those statuses? Does it frustrate you or are you sympathetic? Both. It just depends on what mood I'm in. You know, some, sometimes if I'm scrolling through, it's because I'm a bit fed up and then I, and I see something and I just scroll past it. Or I might think, yeah, I know what she's going through. He's going through. I will you know, put, put a comment or a sad face myself. You know, I, I don't very often um, try and put things like that. Um, but I, I put one on actually the other day and I just thought it was lovely. It was just about the crayons, you know, most well, I crayons. Love that one. I've seen it. Yeah, well, crayons. you know, most crayons are broken, but they can still make a beautiful picture, something yeah. like that. And I just think, you know, people do go through a lot and sometimes they don't know how to express themselves. So, uh, and like me, I talk to the telly, so I might just think, oh, I talk to my telephone and, you know, my, my phone and scroll through and put, a, you know. Hi, you're admitting a lot tonight, love. I am, aren't I? I've, I've, missed, I've missed it. I've got a lot of catching up to do. Um, there's still not so lot's changed in my life, as you can see. Um <laughs> I'm still, <laughs> still watching it's good the telly. Back, though, Claire. It's good to have you back. There, when it comes to social media being nasty or upsetting, do you think the person should come off social media completely if they're being affected by it? Or are we to blame for watching it? Thanks. Silence in the I think it's probably a bit of both. I mean, if, you're, if someone's going to put something controversial upon uh, social media. Some th There's always going to be some hate somewhere. Someone's always going to say something. And, 
you know, people are going, oh, I'm coming off social media for forever. It's like, well, no, just take a break. You yeah, don't need to come off it forever. Just take a break until it's, yeah. all, it's all calmed down and then go back again. I think everybody's you know, it's different. not going to last forever. And it's if, like, you, you know, talking of Love Island, if you scroll through um, social media, Love Island might pop up. I just click on the comments and, oh, you get like I'm arguing. Like, because somebody said this and it's like, oh, why you said this and this and the other? It's because they've all got a, a point of view, like you've got a point of view. You know, agree with it or not, it's just a forum that's telling you what has happened and it, it's people that you've never met before. And, and it just... You know, but going back to to, to that, um, what you said, should they come off or not? It, it's up to the individual. Should they come off? Well, it is that their lifeline? Um, and a lot of people, what they put on social media is not true anyway. But I do scream at it, though, Claire. I do like. I'm a bit sat on the fence at it because I'm screaming it. And TikTok's a big one because it's videos, really. And it, like uh, people are in tears, absolutely on in tears on the screen why are you giving me so much hate why do you hate me why do you that and i just think to myself just log off the app just log mm. off why why are you putting yourself out there why are you watching allowing people to to see that you're falling apart over what they are saying over but are they are they are they are they acting are they enjoying oh, it? Just, you know, do I they... can't be bothered with it. I think, I think with people like that, they do enjoy having the um, the attention. It's like they're not getting any attention anywhere else, so they must have attention or they want to be TikTok famous or they want to be Instagram famous, you know. So they're going to put themselves out there for the views, for the likes, for what, you know, for whatever. See, I've and done that. And I've, put I've, themselves I've... out there. TikTok is good in a sort of way. So I follow. So there, there are people that I think, oh, just log off. Just, just it's affecting your life. And then the people out there that are that are on live every night that I think, oh my goodness, have you not got a life? But there's there's another there's somebody that I follow. She's been on the show actually, Lucy. There's somebody that I follow, Lucy, who who is housebound basically. She is housebound by the house. But she comes on live and she, she's got she's built a community and a family and she does makeup and she sells makeup. And actually, that's her way of socialising. That's her way of, of communicating to the world out there because she can't always get out there because of her illness. That's where social media is amazing. Because actually, it's yeah. getting people out and about. It's getting people on there. So hi, Lucy, if you're watching. But she's she's incredible. But going from that, do you, Sam, you took a question out of my mouth before I even said it. Do you believe everybody should have a break from social media? Yes. I've often had breaks from social media. Um, I've often had breaks because it's just kind of like it gets too much. It's like... Um, I have my own group for my for my mediumship and that. So and sometimes I have to say to the members, look, I've got to take a break. I can't. I am struggling at the minute. I've got to take a break. But, you know, I will be back. I will do, you know, we'll do a big thing when I come back. And, you know, I have to take that break for my own sanity, because if I don't, I know that it's just going to make me. It's just going to make me really ill. It's going to make me worse. And it's just going to make me feel like. Like poop, basically. It's going to make me, going to make me ill. I, you know, I end up unwell. Um, I mean, I use social media a lot to talk to friends and that because I don't get out a lot um, due to mobility issues. So social media has been a good thing for me. Yeah. And and through my group, I have met some friends because I ended up back in May. I went up to Newcastle for a, a wedding because I helped someone with their love life and they was like well if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be getting married now so I went up to Newcastle and I met them through Facebook through groups in Facebook you know so social media does have its good things yeah and and again ladies we've done a poll on it do you believe it's healthy to have a break from any social media platform 100% of you said yes 
it is healthy to have a break. So that moves us on. Now, just to before we move on, when I picked these topics, Claire Brown in May wasn't on the show. <laughs> Before I say it, Claire Brown in May was not there. No, she's, had to, she's had to jump in because we're talking about her favourite topic now. So, Prince Harry and Meghan <laughs> and Marco were seen celebrating her 42nd birthday in California. The experts say there might be tension between the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, with rumours swirling about Harry and Meghan going through a rough patch in their marriage, body language expert Judy James told the Mirror, Harry looks relate looks relate relatable. relegated relegated. Well relegated. done. Um, and Meghan, and as he follows wife out, Meghan of the restaurant of her birthday. So we're back on the subject of Harry and Meghan again. I don't think I've got a leg to stand on this time. But how do you feel about seeing the news at the moment about Harry and Meghan? Well, I can like say, uh, a fan or not, they're a married couple. And to see any married couple, you know, um, going through anything... They've, uh, you know, as well being um, royal as well, they've got children. So, it, you know, it, it's not nice. And what's happened has happened and what will be will be. Um, and they're always in the limelight. I mean, Harry, um, of course, he, he's had no choice of the matter. Um, but Meghan, I think that's what she's always wanted. That's my personal thing, you know, and an, an actress mm -hmm. and everything. And, you know, she... Um, has got a, a, a good a good husband there. But we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Like I say, with the social media, with the paparazzi on at them all the time, what happened to, to um, Harry's mum as well with the paparazzi, it, it can't be easy. You know, they could have just have one wrong word and the cameras are there straight away and take it out of context. So, you know... I, I, I agree with you. I agree what's going on here. Like, 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 I've just, like I've just, I know, shock. Like I've just read, <laughs> um, let me repeat it because I just, when I, when I read the article, I was like, what? Uh, Judy James told the mirror, Harry, uh, told the mirror, but sorry, body, body language expert Judy James. And that made me think, does Harry have to come out like this every time he walks out? Yeah. But it is, isn't it? They do. There is. There is body experts. Smile at everything. Everybody you has their I mean? off days, though. Everybody has their off days, including those people that are in the spotlight and that, including people that get photographed all the time. Everybody has their off days. If they don't, if they can't be bothered to smile for people that are invading their privacy, then you know, that's up to them. But I just think that, you know, everybody has their off days. If they're not, don't look happy, then they caught them at that point where he's just probably thinking something i don't know but i think it, it is taking it out they take it a little too far and they sensationalize it and they make a mountain out of a molehill over it and i don't always look happy do you know what i mean it doesn't mean that i'm not happy it means mm, that you don't you always have. you never look happy <laughs> Oh, sorry. Can you thank Claire Brown in May this evening for this? <laughs> yeah, I just think I just think are we looking too much into it? Why 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 are we even bothered about their marriage? What because, has it got to do with us? Precisely. He we, I agree with you, but that he's royal, isn't he? And they want to they want to wait for the cock up. They want to see it fail because, like I've said, agree or disagree with it. They've got married and, uh, you know, a lot's happened, uh, blah, blah, blah. But they've got children and, you know, it's not fair that, you know, they, they do get dragged through the mud. But that's the life that they are in. So it'll never go away. 
and unless they literally up and went and just went off the sort of face of the earth because that it is off -grid. Really, yeah well, that did off -grid, that, totally that that did get me thinking about relationships though ladies like relationships uh we all yeah, have different kinds of relationships throughout our lives don't we like my best friend 20 years I, I couldn't i couldn't live without him and there's many different relationships we have in our lives that that grow really attached but actually would you as a friend so you're a friend and you see somebody treat your friend badly in a romantic relationship would you step in yeah i would no i've well you see uh, i've uh, been well, in that situation before with yeah, my daughter's I can remember, dad I, I can remember you yeah i can remember you saying yeah. that yeah and i think i commented about this as well but when I was actually in the relationship, my mom was looking in and she could see from her point that it was a, wasn't a good relationship. It was a toxic relationship. But she didn't want to say anything because she, she left it for me to find out for myself. I had to find out for myself. I had to notice these things myself. Because, yes, my mum could have said something and gone, oh, you know, this is happening, this is happening, this doesn't look right, this doesn't look right. And I'd be like, I'd probably just sit there and make excuses for it all or just say, you not know. Not blind. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm, yeah. but I have, I had to see it for myself to know that it was a toxic relationship. You know, it's difficult, isn't it? Like I say, yes, yeah. I, I would step in, but it depends on. You know, is, is it a friend? Is it a family member? Um, and what's actually going on? Uh, because, like you say, it it's really it really difficult because you can have a friendship for for a long, long time, and then you know they then fall madly in love, and you can see that they're not they're not right for them, but your friend will fall out with you. Yeah. 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 But you then could the lose that friendship. Yeah, but then the relationship will go downhill, uh, uh, as in you've got no relationship. But what ha happens then if the the love relationship ends? You know, that friend has got rid of you. You're almost you asking a... that friend to forgive you, aren't you? When yeah, I, do I've you... been in... See, I had to, I had, I was in that position because when I was with my daughter's dad, I pushed everyone away. And uh, the only friends I was allowed to speak to were his friends. And so when we split up, I had to go about trying to reconnect with my friends that I had pushed away. And that is very hard to do because you have to come from a place of basically apologising for your behaviour, apologising for what you did, even though, you know, it probably wasn't your fault if you've been home, if you've been manipulated in, you know, like I was. And so it, you have to rebuild your life after that. And it is hard to rebuild relationships. And they're never always the same again afterwards. No. Again, and again, just, go on. Sorry, Claire, go on. Again, it's what type of friends they were. Because if they were real good friends, I know it's not nice when, um, you know, people leave you, but if you could see that there was something they didn't listen to you that doesn't mean that you can't be friends yes it may never be the same again but as a friend you look out for each other and you know to then see your friend all alone it, it, it it's not nice so uh... i was lucky because one of my friends um she says oh uh, we spent a couple of hours catching up and talking and chatting and all of this and then she says oh well uh, me and a couple of friends are going to go and see knocked up at the cinema at the weekend if you fancy it so my mom was like yeah go for it i'll you know i'll keep an eye on alicia because alicia was just like she was like three years old at the time and she was you know my mom's like oh babes so you go and you know, and I was just grateful that she she reached out and said, do you want to come and do this? And I had the time of my life. I had a really good time. First time in years, because I wasn't allowed to go out and do this, these kind of things when I was with him. And... But again, ladies, we, we have done a poll on it. Would you step in if you saw a friend or a family member was not being 
treated right in a relationship, again, 100% of you said yes. Yeah, you would step in. You would step in if somebody wasn't right. Well, you see, I, I commented, but I didn't vote because... For me, it depends because I've been there. I think uh, it just depends on the situation. Exactly. Well, involved. we come to our most exciting topic of the evening, ladies. This is, the truth is now out there. Alien invasion <laughs> is hitting our cities. So, um, that show where Brit spotted UFOs was sighting near where you live. The truth is out, and now you can find out exactly where. There is across the UK with an incredible inclusive map detailing a whole host of UFO sightings made by stunned Brits. And you, you out there can add to it. But do you believe in aliens? And do you believe you've ever saw one before? I think it'd be naive to sit here to think to sit there and think to myself that we're the only we're the only living beings in this whole entire universe. I right. think it would be very naive to say that the universe is huge and vast. We're just like smaller than pinpricks in it. It's so, time in, it's time in my past love life. I can say I've seen many aliens before. <laughs> many, many aliens. <laughs> I know that I've one. Seen them, I've seen them before. <laughs> Come on, Claire, what was you going to say? Once again, it, it's like life after death, isn't it? I mean, you get people who say that, you know, they've been through the tunnel, they've had somebody waiting for them, and then all of a sudden they've been called back. So, again, um, all down to films again with the, the horror film. I mean, where do they get these things from? You know, especially all the gory ones. Chico. It's like I think I think the best alien film I've come across, a, a film about aliens, it has to be Mars Attacks. No, I wouldn't even watch it. I've watched it. It is yeah, hilarious. So, so again, you, you know, a lot of people like yourself, Sam, you're into you know medium and 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 that type of stuff, life after death and things. Other people people uh, enjoy aliens. You know, mm. they look like going sightseeing. I'm not saying that they're they're not, but. There's got to be something, I suppose. Or, again, is it just like Jesus and, and God and it's just been started and who knows? I mean, like, I, do so. I, I, I love watching things about archaeology and things like that because um, yeah, that's that's my background. I, I, I did a, a heritage course at Bishop Grant and I love all the history of stuff. And... I've quite often come across archaeology things where there's been like what looks like spaceships and what looks like aliens and things like that. And I'm like going, what? You know, it could be something else completely different. How do you know what an alien looks like? How do you know what an yeah. alien looks like? And how do you know what an alien ship is? They're always Speak them to my sort partner. Of... What? <laughs> Speak to my ex-partner. Oh, honestly, well, like I say, I'm not just in, we all have our beliefs and our disbeliefs and, you know, that's what makes the world go round. So, um, who knows? We're all different. When it, when it comes to, do you enjoy a scary movie? And do you like watching documentaries that we hope and pray for that we will never experience? So what I'm talking about that is like life on death row, Pierce Morgan with a murderer. stuff. Are we, are we drawn to programmes like that? Because we're just a little bit intrigued and in the back of our minds as well, we're thinking... We're never going to live this lifestyle. Do you think we are, as humans, really intrigued and we want to know more? Humans yeah. are curious as a, as a humans are very curious as a whole. Anyway, humans yeah. are curious creatures. Anyway, they like to you know they just like like to learn and things like that and know things. I know I do, <laughs> um, but I think another part of it is. You know, it's a life that they've never been able to live. So they can live it in like a fancy world when they're watching films, when they're watching horror films and things like that. And they will go, oh, if I was there, I would have done it this way. I would have done it that way. And it gives them that kind of fantasy of, yeah, I would have done it like this. I would have done, you know, it's like with any films, not just horror films, but with any kind of films. You know, it takes people away from uh, the stress of life 
and they just kind of like it takes them into a whole new world. Yeah, it, well, exactly. But it's all right sitting there watching a the film. Oh, I would do this. I would do that. You can't unless you're in mm. those shoes. It's like I've said be about me with my son, you know, and and with other people. Unless you're in them shoes and walk in that path, I don't think you would know exactly what you'd do because if you've never seen yeah. an alien or a zombie or something, I, I think it's good for people to kind of fantasize about to think yeah. about them. Yeah. What would they, you know, it gets their imagination going. Fantasize you know? about an alien, Sam. That's a new that's one. You. Well, yeah, there you is that's like you. That's you, isn't it, with your uh, alien boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. but let me give you a scenario. <laughs> if if there was tomorrow an alien invasion, would you want to know about it? Oh, oh. that's a good one. That is where I was. Because they would find about it eventually. We'd find about it eventually. There'd be no, you know, it'd be all over social. It'd be all over social media for a start. Um. But to be yeah, fair, I, I, think, you know, I, think I, I would, yeah. Way, I'm, I wouldn't be bothered, you know. You would, Clay, you would want to know. I, I would, yeah, just be for intrigued. Just intrigued to know that, you know. The, Curiosity. Well, again, like. Help the cat. <laughs> well, what? What do they look like? You know, everybody, you've had all these films and everybody's been, um, you know, not sightseeing, but, you know, looking <laughs> for, for it. Really. And there's an invasion. So it's like, what? It's the, those questions, and where can I hide? Type of thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I would be. In, I'd be intrigued. Again, I mean, look at these doomsday preppers. They they prep for all kinds of different things, don't they? Like apocalypse, zombie apocalypse, alien invasion, nuclear fallout, and things like that. And it's like. Uh, you know, some of the things that they come out with, it's like, are you really still on this planet? A I what am... prepper? A what prepper? Doomsday prepper. Oh, a doomsday. Sorry, I didn't get, I just heard yeah, a they, 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 they often have different, uh, thing, you know, some of them, like I said, they'll be like uh, nuclear fall, like there'll be alien invasions, uh, zombie apocalypse and things like that. Everybody preps for different things. And it's like, well, you know, what if, an alien invasion happens and you've got a nuclear fallout bunker and you're not prepared for aliens invading. I have worked, you I know? have worked in a place though, well, I'm not gonna say the place, but I have worked in a place that had a policy and procedure for an alien invasion. Really? Well, yeah, had a policy and procedure for an alien invasion. That was that wow. was quite interesting to say. Although America does have a um they do have a national thing where if uh, alien if uh, there was a zombie uh, outbreak, they do have something in place, don't they? Have you heard yeah. about that one? Mm -hmm. right, going over there, uh, well, then. we did. We did a poll on it. Quite interesting, the poll. Quite interesting. Do you believe in UFOs and aliens? 42% um, of you said no, but 57% um, of you said yes. Yes, you do believe wow. in aliens. You do believe there's aliens and life out there. That brings us to the end of the show. Doesn't, it, doesn't that hour go quick, ladies? Honestly, doesn't it just yeah. fly by? I and we're missing the person, we so we did well. Harder. <laughs> it's because we're working harder. I like we're that. Harder, yeah, I like we? that. Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you for joining us on this Tuesday night. We will be a panel of four next week. We'll be back to four again. But can you thank my panel for this evening? Flying in like a UFO, that's Claire Brown in May. And the person that always likes an invasion, that's Sam J. Hitwell. <laughs> Join us next week. Same time, same place. Take care and a lot of loose love. See you soon. Bye-bye.